About 15 years ago, humanity realized that if it does not want to be like the proverbial frog, which was boiled in milk for the sake of momentary comfort, then we must immediately stop burning minerals that create a greenhouse effect. Indeed, since the beginning of the 20th century, the average annual temperature on the planet has increased by one degree. If it continues this way, then in the 21st century it will rise by another four degrees. Fearing this, mankind frantically began developing green energy. Apparently, we have achieved impressive results. The total installed capacity of renewable electricity has doubled over the past 10 years and amounted to 2,537 gigawatts. There are even countries, Iceland for example, where the share of green energy was 100%. Costa Rica and Austria are closing in, while in Germany, the share of green energy exceeds 50%. We seem to be crawling out of the warm milk, don't we? Most of the growth in green energy, 90%, is due to the rapid growth of solar and wind power plants. During this time, the number of solar gigawatts has increased by 25 times, while wind turbines have increased by only 5 times. Just kidding, obviously there are some objective reasons for this. Unlike solar panels which only require primitive supports under the sun, the installation of wind turbines is very complex. Furthermore, with an increase in the wind generator's power, the cost and complexity of installation grows exponentially. Why? Let's check it out. The wind generator produces a lot of noise and vibration, and so it must be placed away from housing. Another disadvantage is strong winds that can break the wind turbine. Therefore, blades carry the main load. It is for this reason that they have to be folded, which greatly complicates the design. A complex mechanism is also required to set the windmill in the desired position, depending on the direction of the wind. So, will it continue on like this? Solar energy is like a shining princess, and a lot of countries are striving to win her hand. Wind energy is not exactly an ash-covered Cinderella, but if a small fish is better than an empty dish, then it's more like a small fish. However, I have hope that everything will develop harmoniously. My optimism is bolstered by a startup that appeared in Iceland a couple of years ago and proposed a new type of wind turbine called Icewind. Its founder is a red-bearded, young Icelander, Sithor Asgirsson. A couple of years ago, this distant descendant of the Vikings, literally in his own garage, assembled his first wind turbine of an original design. Today, these turbines are already appearing on the roofs of bus stops, are clinging to power line poles, and have even managed to cross the Atlantic and settle in the United States. There are two differences between ice wind turbines and traditional wind turbines. First, their blades have a special curved shape. And second, these wind turbines have a vertical axis of rotation. In the photo, the unusual, strongly curved shape of the blades is striking. Traditional wind turbine blades meet the wind with a broad chest, which presses on them and makes them spin. In fact, it functions just like an aircraft propeller. Icewind's blades operate on the principle of an airplane wing. Due to their shape, when air is blown over them, a pressure difference is created, which makes them rotate. What benefits do these blades provide? Well, the wind load is sharply reduced. Excess force will simply be dumped along the wing, which eventually results in operating at wind speeds of up to 196 feet per second. That's a grade 4 hurricane speed, by the way. In areas with high risk of storms, this is very important. It means that there is no need to create a structure that could withstand hurricanes several times a year, but would be useless the rest of the time, or to come up with a mechanism that would fold the blades in a strong wind. The rate of rotations can also be reduced. Less rotation means less noise and vibration. Ice wind turbines emit no more than 30 decibels of noise, equal to the sound of a whisper not the horrific scream of a traditional wind turbine. The wind turbine operates in any wind direction, just like a plane does. 
Luckily, there's no need for clever windmill rotation mechanisms to catch the wind, as actuating the 320-foot blades at a wind speed of 91 to 131 feet per second is quite an engineering challenge. The axis of rotation can be vertical, too. This verticality has several other benefits. The size is reduced drastically compared to a traditional windmill which has generator's blades of up to 393 feet of diameter attached to its stand. Sorry, birdies, just try to dodge those. In the ice wind, the stand is, in fact, combined with the blades. The entire area of the blades stretches upward here. Thanks to this, such a structure can be stuck literally anywhere. Installation is greatly simplified. In traditional wind turbines, the heaviest parts, the generator and the blades, are placed at the top. Tie a bucket of water to a mop and lift the structure up. Could you hold it? Or would you douse yourself with a cold shower? In ice wind, the generator is placed at the bottom, giving stability to the structure. The blades are compactly placed along its axis, providing for a minimum of bending force and other yuckies of material structural performance. So this wind turbine does not need a strong foundation. In other words, Seathor Asgirson was able to eliminate the main source spots of wind power, the massive structure, the complexity of installation, a large exclusion zone, and the danger to birds. Icewind currently offers three models. CW100 for private use with a rated power of 160 watts and a maximum of 600 watts. RW100 and RW500 for industrial use with a rated power of 100 and 500 watts respectively and a maximum power of 600 and 3000 watts. Of course, Icewind's capacity isn't impressive yet. However, this is only the beginning of the journey. After all, the advantages of Icewind technology are undeniable and make such wind generators truly universal. They can be installed anywhere, from a playground to a power field, and on almost any support, from masts and poles to fully detached powerful megawatt wind turbines. Who knows, maybe these futuristic skyblades will become a vivid example of a new, green era of mankind, and eventually will change the world for the better.